this, finally, so I can actually look at the diagram. Focus, yep. So that's what we're trying to do, step, well, sorry, step four right here. So we will, uh, let's see. It's actually written out here. It's connected short jump wire, across the, the starter solenoid, which I'm just gonna use the positive as my starter solenoid. And then using a heavy jumper, connect A2 to F1, which F2 is right there, F1's right there. I have A1 hooked up right here. Disconnect this. Might come down just a little bit. that water. Or that nut. So it F1 rereading it. Connect terminal A2 to F1 and A1 to ground. Well that's A2. So that needs to be connected to F1. A1 terminal to ground. What do I do with that drawing? What do I do with that paper I just had? God, I'm gonna lose stuff so fast. There it is. A1 is also ground. F2 is the main power. So. I don't understand what DF does though. What is DF? There's no. There's nothing that says the DF, what the DF does. Because there's a little, a little terminal right up here that says DF. So I'm just curious as what that does. So here. Nuts on. Okay. So we have that as my ground. to F2, F2 to open, so it doesn't shorten them out there, A1 to ground. Sorry, I'm going to wait. Oh, that's why. Let me uh, get you re repositioned. All right, so you can see it. I'm gonna try to put a white mark there. Yeah, it, it, it works. So I know I can start the, I can work towards it tomorrow. It's uh, getting late tonight, and it's cold, and I wanna kinda get some things organized, but I got the wiring diagram out. I can actually go and do the wiring in the golf cart, or I can just leave it like this and manually start the motor if I want to right now, because right, I, ha I don't even know if this motor is good. It's hasn't ran in years, been told. 
<clears throat> so uh, hopefully we can have some fun with it tomorrow. All right. Well, we're back at it. Uh, I'm gonna real quick just take a second and kind of try to neat and tidy up this engine bay area. Get some of these wires taken care of and addressed. Figure out what exactly is what. Um, I know th where those go. I know what those do. This is my throttle linkage, which I have to figure that out. Gotta get my fuel set up better. Cause right now, it is not healthy. That gas tank smells like varnish. It smells like an, a jet ski that sat for 30 plus years. This is the little, it looks like it's a Briggs and Stratton vac or a pulse fuel pump. Hopefully that still works. And then we have the the primer pump that is frozen solid and doesn't want to move. Looks like there's a factory pulse pump right down here. Looks like. Man, that though he's new. That's what I need there. What does this go to? Oh, I think this goes to here. Just gotta be cautious. So it looks like we have a little broken component right here. The wire pulls this back. It looks like it might kill the spark. I don't know how that works. It's like been rubbing for a minute. Sorry, you guys are just hearing me babble. I'm Kind of just figuring my way around this thing, getting ready to set, getting ready to get the starter generator set back up because I will insert a video now, but I figured out how the setup functions. So now I can just, oh, sorry, recovering from a little cough here. So now I can actually get it on there and test it and see if the motor will actually start. Because um, last we left on this video was the I couldn't get that starter generator ready bleh, starter generator to spin at all. But pulling up the documents on how it was wired, I was able to see that it will spin and it will function correctly. So uh, now I'm I'm better. I'm going to be better off by putting it back on the golf cart. <clears throat> I'm just debating whether or not I should try to get the belt on right now, or if I should just wait. Because I don't know if it'll fit. Or if I have to take the entire motor off to get this on. Surely I don't have to do that. But then again, Things like that would not surprise me, because this is old. Pardon me. Yeah, this is old technology, and when you get old technology, you get things that are kind of pain in the rear to work with. So, yeah, like I have to put it on. That side first, the actual drive engine side first before I can put it on the uh, rear end of the golf cart. Might. Which plate do I have on those? Not a whole lot, it looks like. Uh, let's try it. Not 
seized because I'm able to spin the shaft. kind of tedious me fighting this putting it back on so I'll bring you back here in a minute <clears throat> we're gonna see if we have spark I don't really want to go through the headache of wiring all of this just for I just want to make sure I have spark before I go through any more headache. That should be a good ground right there. Can, you, can I see it? Right there. So we should focus a bit better. Okay. Right there. We're looking for spark. I really don't think we will have spark right away if I'm checking something. All right, yeah, no spark. Now, I'm gonna try to give it, okay, how am I gonna do this? Still no spark. Kind of what I figured. Because coil's got to get power. Coil's grounded. But coil, the coil also has to go through its um, points and condenser, of which is follow this wire in. It's all the way down to the bottom. Below. not too bad to get access to it just looks like it's gonna be a pain in the rear because it's quarter inch holding this mesh on and then the mesh comes off and then there's more uh, let me get some tools I'll bring you right back once we get that and then we will check and see if we actually do have spark so this is what I'm talking about by the points and condenser so that's your condenser there's your points. And most likely that point or in there is really corroded and not uh, conducting spark. 
Maybe I also need to add another additional ground to the system. No, because it should. I guess that is isolated from that. So, <clears throat> I just thought of something. You know, you just go through life, you just kind of work it out and figure things, figure out what's causing issues. So, in, in here, it needs a ground for it to go through the engine. I was using a bolt. Well, let me get you out of the stand. I'm using this bolt ground out my spark plug. But, <clears throat> if you notice, this was my ground. But my ground was not touching the case at all. So I technically had no ground. I wonder if that will give me spark on the spark plug. Because those points really do not look horrible. Oh, come on, camera. Yeah, you can see in there, there's not a whole lot of gook built up on them. So, I'm not crazy worried about those points. I think I had a bad ground in my system. So, let me just set in the camera. And we'll aim right there. Now I'm gonna get a jumper to create the ground and then I am going to ground it and try again and see if I get spark. Hopefully I do. I'll bring it back when we're about ready to test. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna try to do this without zapping the crap out of me because this coal oil does produce quite a bit of voltage. See my thing. Please don't let me. Please don't let me. Please don't let me. Oops, it's not zapping me. Get better position. Make a good ground. Do you see that spark? I think you can hear it. I think you can see it too. It's me actuating the points manually. So if I spun it over now, we'd have spark. Now let me disconnect this because I don't want to short anything. <clears throat> so I am going to leave that undone down here. Uh, let me see. Down here where the points are, I'm gonna leave that undone. I'm gonna put the spark plug uh, back, and I'm tempted to just feed it a little gasolina and see what happens. Let me. Uh, your battery's flashing, so let me change it. Let me uh, get it updated or get a new one put in. Get a few things set up, and then we will see if we can have some spark. Well, some fire and ignition here, so I'll bring you right back. All right, we got it set up where we're wired. We've been, I've been kind of test fitting it and test, test running it just seeing if it goes. We've got a starter solenoid hooked up, as well as um, some fuel in the carburetor. So let's see if it actually will kick off. Oh, well, we got. Pulse, fact, pulse line shooting something out. Well, it wants to. That's running. This is the vacuum 
So the engine, when it runs, it will shoot or uh, create a vacuum and pulse, essentially. And that would, that's what actuates a diaphragm uh, fuel pump. And that will suck the fuel from the tank all the way to the carb. They put on an aftermarket with a different one. But I had taken it off because it kind of was dry rotted and cracked. So it's shooting out fuel, which shouldn't be the case. So I don't know. See if we can go put it around. That might be a fun little thing to do. Fire hazard, but a little fun thing. Let's see. I have set everything up. Um, it is a new day. I've not exhausted, and I actually was thinking straight. And well, I think last night um, my buddy and I just flooded the engine really, really bad. So let it sit. And I have already tested this mainly because I was just wiring it up and I was seeing what would happen. But I'll let the, I'll see if it will go again. See if the, uh, the fact that it's actually spinning over, better than it was and now there's no more fuel in it so uh, do I have a ether or can I just force feed it? Maybe I can force feed it. <gasps> Let's get this off. Golly that's on no good. Alright we're gonna cut it off because that's not coming loose. Somehow wedge that there's the uh, titanium ether right here, and this is just two-stroke oil, two-stroke gas. I filled up the <clears throat> carb a little bit, and a couple shots of ether in there. There's no drive belt on this, so the engine will just run. Um, let's see what happens and I bet you'll take off. <laughs> empty now. Let's see if I can fill this up all the way without it puking over. It's filling up, filling up. Shots of ether and go at it again. And it's out of gas again. I'm only filling I'm only filling the tube up to like down here so it's like the fuel bowl plus a second of runtime. So I think now it's time to work towards the fuel system and see what I can get set up and maybe maybe we can get something going and we can run it for a bit longer than two seconds. Now I just put this on last night and now 
Why does it want to come out? This is a Makuni fuel pulse pump. Has a P on it, and then it looks like it just, I'm guessing, this is my inlet side, or my outlet side to my, uh, to my carburetor. And let me get the two-stroke gas. Oh, oh God, my, <laughs> my body's kind of tired. I spent a lot of time yesterday out here in the garage and, well, not as young as I used to be. Let's put it that way. And I'm really feeling it. But I wouldn't trade this for anything. I absolutely love just tinkering with things, helping friends out, just doing the most random thing possible. It's just a fun job or fun thing to do. Okay, so you ah, shoot. I spilled. I'm running out of fuel. I need to get some more short gas at some point. You can't see me, can you? I'm just realizing this. I'm literally just doing stuff on the side in hopes that you can see me. But I know you can't because camera's ang angled at the wrong area. Oh well. Okay. Fuel line is set in it. It looks like fuel made it up into there. So let's give it a little bit more ether. even do that it was like the battery was dead but the battery wasn't and I put a new or a backup one on it and it was spinning over like da 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 now it's I don't remember if I got too much fuel in it or if my adjustments are out because I totally took a stab at my adjustments because you know just can't see. You never set it up before in your life and you're just wanting to figure it out. So, um, I don't know. I'm gonna try to get some video of it running and me driving it, but that might be an hour or two hours of me just tinkering with it, putting the uh, ignition coil or points cover back on it, putting the little screen back on it, tidying up my fuel tank, going to get some fuel, so. Uh, for right now, I'm going to call it, and I'll bring you back when I actually am going to go ride this thing, and I think this will be the end of the series, and unless I get some, get some money to go spend on, like, a new fuel system for it completely, or new carburetor, or a new air filter box, because there's no air filter going from the carburetor to the air box element. So right now it's just sucking random air, or dirty air in essentially. So uh, we will see um, what comes next, but for right now I think that's pretty much gonna be it for me today. So 
Thank you guys for joining me and hanging out and watching me tinker on this little buggy and ride it, not, well, hopefully ride it around. I'm looking forward to that. And we should be back on a different project here in a little bit. I might have some a cool little how to install uh, video because I planning on doing some uh, remote unlocks for my truck and maybe even do a snowplow video because I put I bought one and put it on the t my Tacoma so should be a fun little next couple months uh, hopefully I can get some more projects in like this and get them going again because I mean these are just an absolute riot to have around and just to go rip and have some fun with so well I'm gonna call it for today I'm just babbling um, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend and hopefully y'all enjoy one of this winter vortex we're having and hopefully we can well, hang out again another time on a different project so all right toodaloo well i forgot to record an ending to this video so you guys are just gonna get a little me editing which is absolute garbage because all i do is literally just throw the clips together and add a little bit of a fun intro and exit um so with that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for joining me, wrenching with me, and toodaloo, and have a wonderful week.